Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard and show the descent of his arm with fire, tempests, and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord, the enemy will be beaten down. As the Lord strikes with the rod, it will be with tambourines and harps. As a lion roars, so the Lord of hosts will come down to fight from Mount Zion. So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will deliver it.
go. We want to come into this secret place with you, Lord.
everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Hallelujah, Lord, you have been our strength in every generation. To everlasting, you are God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. We thank you that we are in the city where your son was crucified. We thank you, Father, for the agony that you went through as you had to turn your back on your only son as he died in this city for us. We thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you like to rend the heavens and come down and clothe us with majesty and glory and beauty, all because of the cross of Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Bo Rock Kodesh. Come, Holy Spirit. Move among us. Touch us. Go deep into our hearts. Offer him your heart. Give him a heart offering. Here's my heart. Change me, Lord. Invade me. Impact me. Possess me. Transform me. I need more of you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. 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 Touch everyone. From the ends of the earth, touch them, Lord. We've come here to meet with you. Lord, we only want you. We want you. We want you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, move among your people. Move among your people. Hallelujah. 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 Pray to the Lord. Pray in tongues. Sing in tongues. Thank you, Lord. Move in power. Move in glory. Manifest your Son. Manifest Jesus. Give us a fresh revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Open your heart to the Lord. He is here. The tangible presence of the Holy Spirit is all over this place. Don't miss this. He wants to minister to you. Open your heart. Yield to him. 
any area of your life that is a hindrance to the flow, yield it to him right now. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the awful pride of life. Yield to the Lord. Yield your body to the Lord. Yield your members to the Lord that he might do the deepest work that he wants to do, that nothing will be stopping him. Nothing will truncate what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you and in me. This is the grace of God. This is the love of God. This is the mercy of God that he sends us the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. We thank you that we are in the city where your son was crucified. We thank you, Father, for the agony that you went through as you had to turn your back on your only son as he died in this city for us. We thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you like to rend the heavens and come down and clothe us with majesty and glory and beauty, all because of the cross of Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Bo Raka Kodesh. Come, Holy Spirit. Move among us. Touch us. Go deep into our hearts. Offer him your heart. Give him a heart offering. Here's my heart. Change me, Lord. Invade me. Impact me. Possess me. Transform me. I need more of you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. 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 Touch everyone from the ends of the earth. Touch them, Lord. We've come here to meet with you. Lord, we only want you. We want you. We want you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, 
Move among your people. Move among your people. Hallelujah. 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 Pray to the Lord. Pray in tongues. Sing in tongues. Thank you, Lord. Move in power. Move in glory. Manifest your Son. Manifest Jesus. Give us a fresh revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Open your heart to the Lord. He is here. The tangible presence of the Holy Spirit is all over this place. Don't miss this. He wants to minister to you. Open your heart. Yield to Him. Any area of your life that is a hindrance to the flow, yield it to Him right now. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the awful pride of life. Yield to the Lord. Yield your body to the Lord. Yield your members to the Lord. That he might do the deepest work that he wants to do. That nothing will be stopping him. Nothing will truncate what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you and in me. This is the grace of God. This is the love of God. This is the mercy of God that he sends us the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I want to talk to you uh, this morning about rage, rage, and response. Rage and response. The nations are raging, especially the ones right around us, our neighborhood. And what is our response? Father, your word is holy. There are words coming from men and politicians and television commentators and academics and films and there are words, 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 words. But Lord, we have the sure word of God. Speak the word to us. Open us to receive it. Help us yield to it that we might be changed and obey it and walk in great victory. Amen. I would like to play, pay honor to the word of God and reverence to the word of God. And perhaps you could stand as a sign of reverence it's really not just standing. It's like offering your heart to the Lord that you want to hear the word the, the, that will be imparted into you. And so I would like to read Psalm 2. The second psalm. And the psalmist says this. You want to look at it on your iPad or iPod or your Bible, whatever you have. Helps sometimes when you see it as well as hear it. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces 
and cast away their cords from us. The Lord responds, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He shall speak to them in his rage and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. Hallelujah. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for their inher your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, hallelujah. Amen. That's about all you can say. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling us what he's doing, what the world's doing, what he's about to do. And we ought to say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Psalm 2. <laughs> hallelujah. Psalm 2, verse 12. Kiss the Son. It's intimacy with Jesus. Church, we need a deeper intimacy with the Son, with Him, lest He be angry and you perish in the way when His wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in Him. This is is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Rage and response. Let's talk about rage first. Rage is fury. Rage is uh, incitement that is bubbling over into terrible, burning anger. That's what rage means. In our neighborhood where we live, we live on Mount Carmel, we're 25 miles from Hezbollah. And we don't worry because they only have, according to the UN, 40,000 rockets and missiles. And it takes 60 seconds to get to our house, so we are, we're in good shape. But we have the word of God. He watched over us in the last Hezbollah war, and he will watch over us in whatever is coming next. Because we have the word of God and we stand on the Word of God. Hallelujah. The nations may be raging, but God has it all under control. Hallelujah. Some of the rage going on around our, in our neighborhood, 100, at least 100,000 Muslims slaughtered by other Muslims in Syria. Think about it. Probably two million refugees fleeing Syria, Christians being slaughtered in Syria. A friend of mine sitting here that has been there and seen what's happened with the Red Cross. Hundreds of innocent civilians, mothers, children, writhing in agony in the pain of chemical weapons as they die. And people try to pour water on them and put out the fire on their bodies weapons of mass destruction released of Muslims against other Muslims and Muslims against Arab Christians. This is rage. This is the rage of the nations. This is hatred. This is violent. This is incitement. Daily bombings in Iran, Iraq, excuse me, Muslims mur murdering other Muslims, tribes of Muslims killing other Muslims. I have a friend who has a church of 3,000 people in Baghdad. Of course, he travels in a bulletproof van, car or vehicle with uh, security guards all around him everywhere he goes. But God is moving in Iraq, hallelujah. Daily bombings in Iraq, U.S. warships off the coast of Syria. Missiles, heard on the news, read on the, saw on the news this morning. Russian missile destroyers just pulled into the Mediterranean. So there are Russian missile ships and American ships, naval ships, side by side. 
Now, in case you didn't realize it, they're not on the same team. It may be funny, but it's dangerous. All it takes is a word from somebody. Push a button. Christians under siege in Egypt. The two buildings of the Bible Society of Egypt have been burned, have been destroyed. Forty to fifty churches have been destroyed. Nuns have been raped. It is the worst persecution, according to the leaders, the Christian leaders in Egypt. It's the worst per persecution since the Islamic invasion 13 centuries ago. There's never been persecution of Christians like this in Egypt before, even though it was terrible in those days. This is happening now. This is the rage of the nation. Hamas jihad groups with children who aren't teenagers yet. Jihad means kill the Saturday people and then kill the Sunday people. We're first. They're taught to hate the Jews. Camps all over the Gaza Strip. Hamas. It is promoted and under, underwritten and uh, sponsored by the United Nations and paid for by the United States. A whole generation of young Muslims chanting hatred against the Jews. That we will take Haifa, we will take Jerusalem, we will take Tel Aviv, we'll kill the Jews, we'll drive them into the sea. Little kids, all summer long. Now on Mount Carmel, where we live, we had a children's camp. There's only maybe a hundred kids, but they were Arabs and Jews. And they all learned to love Jesus. Some of them were Muslims, some of them were Jews. They learned to love Jesus, they learned to love the Father, and they learned to love each other. And all these kids, for four days, were worshiping Jesus in Hebrew and Arabic on Mount Carmel. Hallelujah. This is our response to the rage of the nations. Summer camps, we teach them to love one another. The hospitals in Haifa, all on emergency status right now. The largest hospital in Haifa, I was in there for a test the other day. It's right down on the Mediterranean, it's called Rambam. And it's made, named after a famous rabbi. It's a huge complex of buildings and uh, it's well known for its research and training Muslim doctors from other nations that come and they have to be quiet about it. But Jews and Arabs are in the, uh, in the uh, emergency room every day and night. You see Orthodox Jews sitting, sitting next to religious Muslims. The doctors are Jews and, and, and Arabs all, all in, in Haifa. And uh, what's happening now is they have built a huge parking lot underneath the hospital. It's taken them years, probably five years it seems like they finished it. And that parking lot, within 48 hours, they can turn it into a hospital for wounded soldiers and wounded civilians. Overnight, all the cars go out, all the beds come down from the walls. We've, we, we've looked at it. It's like the only one in the world in preparations for the rage of the nations hitting Israel and hitting northern Israel and Galilee and Mount Carmel again. We have, um, all our people have gas masks. Uh, the nation was lined up for hours getting gas masks last week. They ran out of gas masks and now there are other places distributing them. Our children need gas masks. We have to explain, explain to the children what this is all about. So we all have our, our gas masks. We have war supplies in three huge containers. We have food and water and all kinds of other things that we, we will need. You know, the war isn't really a political war. It's a spiritual war. And we are warriors in the spirit. Amen? The devil has come down having great wrath, great rage, because he knows that his time is short. So this rage, that the devil is behind all this rage of hatred, violence, destroying other people, mass murder, all of this is going on in the Middle East. Now, if yeah, sometimes when I travel, I put up a map and you know show the Middle East. Sometimes when you show the map, I'll ask an audience somewhere, wherever, some country we're in, say, where's Israel? And they're going, they can't find it. We're this tiny little place. 
You know, at one point we're nine miles wide. You can drive across Israel at, at, at Netanya up on the coast in about five minutes. That's how close we are to the people that are in a rage that want to eliminate the nation of Israel. Now, my wife and I have been blessed over the years that we have some friends in Switzerland. And uh, they have a little cabin up in the Alps. And we go up there, usually in August, and uh, we get close to God. Well, first of all, we get close to cows. Because the only thing you can hear is an occasional cow bell. We know the cows. The cows look in the window and wonder if we're going to give them breakfast. And, I'm, uh, and so it is one of the most wonderful, beautiful places in the world. And you know, a cloud will come down and just cover the cabin and the top of the mountain. We're, we're, we feel like we're in the pillar of cloud. Don't move. We don't want to go back yet because every time we go back, we go back and face a war. Let us stay up here a little bit longer. And uh, for some years, we didn't have any internet up there or anything. And, you know, there's, there's nobody, nobody up there because people go there and ski and it's, it's just us and God. Hallelujah. But somebody in Singapore gave my wife an iPhone. My life changed and so did hers. When I saw her reading the Bible on an iPhone, I said, Jesus is coming soon. One time I was speaking to a Chinese uh, congregation and uh, I said, everyone take out your Bibles and no one took out a Bible. And I realized they all have iPhones. I'm the only one, you know, if the Lord tarries, the, our grandchildren won't even know what this is. It'll all be in, on, a, on, their, on their watch or something like that. Anyway. Why was I talking about that? <clears throat> oh, we could get some news this year. It was just a couple of weeks ago we were there. We could get some news off her iPhone. But it was important that we did because this whole thing with Syria was happening and what was Obama going to do and what was the British going to do, what were the French going to do, and all of that. So we needed to know. And we were in touch with our staff, and if something broke out, we needed to jump on a plane and come home. So as we saw what was happening, we said, look, let's quit look watching the news. We started proclaiming, we do it every summer. We proclaim the word of God. We read it out loud. You know, you're, those are his words. When we just read Psalm 2, that's not my word. That's, not, that's his words. And his words are powerful and drive back the powers of darkness. That's why we need to proclaim the word of the Lord. So as we were seeking the Lord and asking the Lord what's going on, what's happening, uh, should we go back, how bad is it? The Lord took us to Jeremiah chapter 50. So we've talked a little bit about the rage in the Middle East. Now I want to talk about response. Jeremiah chapter 50. I guess if you have an iPhone, you find the scriptures a lot faster. And everybody said, everybody from the Far East said, Singapore, if you don't have an iPhone, you're a dinosaur. Somebody, we were the last congregation probably on earth that got a website. And a prophet friend of mine once said to me, you don't have a website? These messages need to go out to the ends of the earth. I said, well, we're going to, we'll get one. And he said, I'm not talking to you again until you get a website because you live in Jurassic Park. I never saw it, but I know what it's about, dinosaurs or whatever. Uh, we're out of Jurassic Park. We're getting a new website soon. We're updating it. Hallelujah. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 50. Here's what the Lord spoke to us. The Lord... The Lord has opened his armory, his arsenal. The Lord has opened his storage of weapons. It's not about missiles. It's not about M16s. It's not about F16s. For us, we have weapons. And you may not have realized it, but we were using some of them this morning. 
Do you know that when you dance in the spirit, you are stepping on the enemy? Hallelujah. That's why we dance. That's why David danced. Praise the Lord. When we worship the Lord and proclaim the word of the Lord in worship, it is powerful. It is driving back the powers of darkness. Listen, the, the devil is allergic to pure praise. He was a worship leader and got thrown out of heaven because of disobedience. And when we praise the Lord with real pure praise, the enemy can't come near it. He flees. So the Lord spoke, started speaking to us about his armory. Now, when I was a little boy, I grew up in Washington, D.C. And in our neighborhood, there was an armory. An armory is a building that's built that, where they have weapons in there. And it was for the National Guard, I guess, in case some, I don't know, emergency. And uh, we as kids, we had, were part of a basketball league. We played, they had a basketball court in the armory. So we all said, we're going over to the armory to play basketball. And so all I knew was a, go, a place to go and play basketball. But an armory is a place where when you need weapons, you go and get them. Like our two boys, our two foster sons are in the reserves, uh, IDF, like most people. When they get called up, they have to go to the armory, wherever it happens to be, and get their, I, get their M16 and get ready for the war, whatever it is. So the Lord said, I have opened up my armory. Now look, what the, look at the rest of the verse. I have opened up my armory and brought out the weapons, verse 25, and he has brought, has brought out the weapons of his indignation or rage. Now look at this picture. God has opened his armory. All the weapons, divine weapons of holy warfare. Yeah, his weapons are divinely powerful for the pulling down of strongholds. Amen? They're divine. So he's, and he's, he's brought them out. It's like he's laying them out and saying to his church, his body, are you going to come and get yours? Are you going to use it against the enemy? You know, when you're sworn into the IDF, like our, our kids were, it's down at the Cotel at the Western Wall, and the, uh, they have a stack of M16s stacked up, and they have a stack of Bibles. You know that is, every Israeli soldier gets a Bible? It's the Army Bible. It's not the New Testament, it's the Old Testament. Although my oldest son, they knew what he was a believer, and they gave him an Old Testament and a New Testament. They, praise the Lord. But you, you come up there, and you pick up your Bible. An officer gives you the Bible, and he gives you an M16, and you cross your heart. And you, you make a vow, or, or you make an oath with it, that I will uh, defend the nation, I will be honorable, I'll be a decent person, so on. And I heard this officer giving this speech, and I said, this sounds like this guy's a pastor. I mean, it was so close to the kingdom of the principles. But here, the soldiers have their, you know, they, they, they carry their Bibles with them. And they a lot of them will read them on the battlefield and so on. Now, so we said to the Lord, well, what weapons are you talking about? What do we need when we come back to Israel? And he gave us three things. Praise prayer and proclamation these are the weapons the Lord wants to unleash to come against the powers of the enemy now listen to me there's praise and there's praise I'm talking about pure praise pure praise is so powerful he inhabits the praises of his people Israel when you praise him, when you are in purity, and the praise is really pure out of your a pure heart, who can ascend to the hill, hill of the Lord but him who has clean hands and a pure heart? When you praise him like that, he inhabits the praises. He comes down, inhabits you, rests on you, rests on the meeting. One time we were in a country, <clears throat> I won't say which one, big conference. I was the speaker. Karen was the worship leader. But they had a couple of their worship teams from this denomination there also. I think two or three of them. The first one, there was no anointing whatsoever. And it wasn't these kids' fault. They hadn't been trained about what praise and worship is really all about. And I talked to them at a break afterwards and time, prayed more and you know, tried to encourage them and so on. There was no anointing. 
Then another group comes. There was no anointing on, they just didn't know. But then a group of young people from this country, this denomination, they came and it was pure. The whole, and the Holy Spirit just came down. It's all about, it's all about the vessel. The Levites had to be sanctified before they went in to sing. When we've had worship teaching uh, seminars or up on our place, we always teach on the character of the worshiper before how you worship. Because it's all about your heart. Those harpists last night, for those of you, I don't think any of them know how to play a harp. I mean, they know a few things, but God started to come in certain places. Because obviously some of them have pure hearts. I know Kate Hess does. But the Lord, David, look, David the king didn't go to a harp conservatory in Jerusalem. He learned out there with the Lord and the, the Holy Spirit taught him how to do it. Pure praise drives back 